to bed. I'm not staying orders to bed no more. I'm 18 and a woman, however single. Do you wish to sit up? Then sit up! I wish to go to bed! Good night, then! Good night! <laughs> oh, the noose! The noose is up! There'll be no noose. She wants me dead, John. I knew all week it would come to this. They, they dismiss it. You heard her say it. Tomorrow! She will cry me out until they take me. Sit you down. She wants me dead, John. You know it. I say, sit down. We must be wise, Elizabeth. Oh, indeed, indeed. I'll, I'll go to Ezekiel Cheever. I'll, I'll tell him she said it were all sport. John, with so many in the jail, more than that is needed now, I think. Would you favor me with this? Go to Abigail. Why, what have I to say to Abigail? John, grant me this. You have a faulty understanding of young girls. There is a promise made in any bed. Promise? What promise? Spoken or silent, a promise is surely made. She may dote on it now. I'm sure she does. And think to kill me, and then to take my place. It is her dearest wish, John. I know it. There be a thousand names. Why does she call out mine? There be a certain danger in calling out such a name. I know Sarah Good, drunk and half-witted, nor Osborne, sleeping in ditches. She dare not call out such a uh, name as mine. There not be monstrous profit in it. She thinks to take my place, John. She cannot think it. Have you ever shown her somewhat of contempt? She cannot pass you in church, but you will blush. And they blush for my sin, I think. I think she sees another meaning in that blush. What's he? What's he, you, Elizabeth? I think you'd be somewhat ashamed, for I am there, and she is so close. When will you know me, woman? Were I stone, I would have cracked for shame this seven months. Then go, and tell her she is a whore. Whatever promise she may sense, break it, John, and break it. Good, then I'll go. Oh, how unwillingly. Fear not. I'll curse her hotter than the oldest cinder in hell. But pray you, begrudge me not my anger. Your anger, John, I only... Woman, am I so base? I Do you truly think me base? I never called you base. Then how do you charge me with such a promise? The promise of a stallion gives a mare I gave that girl. Then why do you anger with me when I bid you break it? Because it speaks deceit, and I am honest. But I'll plead no more. See, now your spirit twists around the single error of my life, and I'll never tear it free. Oh, you'll tear it free. When you come to realize it, I will be your only wife, or no wife at all. She has an error in you yet, John Proctor, and you know it well. Why, Mr. Hale, uh, good evening, sir, good evening. Uh, come in, come in. Good evening. I, I hope we do not startle you. No, only I heard no voice. Tomorrow, good wife of Proctor. I, Elizabeth. I hope you're not off to bed yet. No, no, sir. It's just we're not very accustomed to visitors after dark, but you are most welcome here. Well, well will you sit, sir? I will. Let you sit, good wife, Proctor. Or will you drink cider, Mr. Hale? No, it, it rebels my stomach. I have some further traveling yet tonight. But sit you down, sir. I'll not keep you long, but I have some business to discuss with you. Is this of the court? No, no, I, I come of my own without the court's authority. Hear me. I know not if you are aware, but your wife's name is mentioned in the court. Aye, sir, we know of it. Our Mary Warren told us. We are entirely amazed. I am a stranger here, as you know, and in my ignorance, I. I find it hard to draw a clear opinion of them that come accused before the court. And so this evening, and now tonight, I go from house to house. I come now from Rebecca Nurse's house. Rebecca's charge! Oh, God forbid such a one be charged. She is, however, mentioned somewhat. You cannot believe, I hope, that Rebecca trafficked with the devil. Woman, it, it is possible. You cannot think it. This is a strange time, mister. No man may longer doubt the powers of the dark are gathered in monstrous attack upon this village. There is too much evidence now to deny it. You will agree, sir. I have no knowledge in that line. But I find it hard to think that so pious woman be secretly a devil's bitch after seventy years of such good prayer. Aye, but the devil is wily when you cannot deny it. However, she is far from accused, and I know she will not be. I thought, sir, to uh, uh, put some questions as to the Christian character of this house, if you'll permit me. Why, we have no fear of question, 
it, sir. Good then. In the book of record that Mr. Paris keeps, I note that you are rarely in church on Sabbath day. No, sir, you, you are mistaken. Only 26 times in 17 months, sir. I must call that rare. Will you tell me why you are so absent? I never knew I needed to account to that man whether I come to church or stay at home. My wife was sick this winter. So I am told. Oh, but you, sir, why could you not come alone? Well, I certainly did come when I could. And when I could not, I prayed in this house. Mr. Proctor, your house is not a church. Your theology must tell you that. It does, sir, it, it does. But it also told me a minister may pray to God without he have golden candlesticks upon the altar. What golden candlesticks? Ever since the church were built, we had pewter candlesticks upon the altar. And Francis Nurse made them, you know. A sweetheart hand never touched the metal. And then Paris came. And for twenty weeks he preached nothing but golden candlesticks until he had them. And I tell you, sir, I work the earth from dawn of day to blink of night, and when I look to heaven and I see my money glaring at his elbows, it, it hurt my prayer, sir, it hurt my prayer. Sometimes I think that man dreams cathedrals, not flatboard meeting houses. And yet, sir, a, a Christian on Sabbath day must be in church. Tell me, you have three children? Aye, uh, boys. How come it's that only two are baptized? I like it not that Mr. Parrish should lay his hand upon my baby. I see no light of God in that man, I'll not deny it. I must say to Mr. Proctor, that is not for you to decide. The man's ordained, therefore the light of God is in him. What's your suspicion, Mr. Hale? No, no, I, I have no suspicion. I yelled the roof upon that church. I hung the door. Oh, did you? That, that's a good sign, then. Perhaps I have been too quick to bring the man to book. But, but surely you can never conceive that we ever desire the destruction of religion. I, I think that's on your mind, is it not? I... I have... There's a softness in your record, sir. A softness. I do think maybe we have been too hard on Mr. Paris. But sure we never loved the devil here. Do you know your commandments, Elizabeth? I certainly do. There be no mark of blame upon my life. I am a covenanted Christian woman. And you, sir? Why, I, I am sure I do, sir. Let you repeat them, if you will. The commandments? Aye. Thou shalt not kill? Aye. Thou shalt not steal? Aye. Thou shalt not covet thy neighbor's goods, nor make unto thee any graven image. Thou shalt not take the name of the Lord in vain. Thou shalt have no other gods before me. Thou shalt remember the Sabbath day and keep it holy. Thou shalt honor thy father and mother. Thou, thou shalt not bear false witness. Thou shalt not make unto thee any graven image. You have said that twice, sir. Aye. Adultery. John. <laughs> ah. You see, sir, between the two of us, we do know them all. <laughs> I think it'd be but a small fault, the sir. Theology, sir, is a fortress. No crack in a fortress may be accounted small. There be no love for Satan in this house. I pray it. I pray it dearly. Well, then, uh, I'll bid you good night. Mr. Hale, I do think you are suspecting me somewhat. Are you not? Goody Proctor, I, I do not judge you. My duty is to add what I may to the godly wisdom of the court. I pray you both good health and good fortune. Good night, sir. I think you must tell him, John. What's that? Will you tell him? I have no proof for it, except my word be taken, but I know that the children's sickness had naught to do with witchcraft. Not to do? Mr. Parrish discovered them dancing in the woods, and they took fright, that is all. Who told you this? Abigail Williams. Abigail? Ah. Abigail Williams said it had naught to do with witchcraft? She told me the day you came, sir. Why did you keep this? I did not know until this evening that the whole town has gone daft with this nonsense. Nonsense? Sir, I have myself examined Tichuba, Sarah Good, and numerous others that have confessed to dealing with the devil. They have confessed it. And why not, if they must hang for denying it? There are many of those who would confess to anything before they hang. Have you thought of that? I have. I have indeed. And you, would you testify to this in court? Why, I... Not considered going to court, but if I must, I will. You falter there. I, I falter nothing. I 
You may only wonder how my story may be believed in such a court. I, I may wonder when, when such a man as, as steady-minded as you may suspicion a woman that I've never lied. She cannot lie, sir, and the whole world knows she cannot. I may falter somewhat. I am no fool. what I have said. I, I may have said it. I have often wondered if there be witches. Then you do not believe. The gospel speaks of witches, and I will not deny them. And you, woman? I cannot. Cannot? Elizabeth, you bewilder him. I cannot believe the devil may own a woman's soul, Mr. Hill, but she is kept in upright way as I have. I am a good woman. I know it. And if you may believe that I may only do good works in this world, and it be secretly bound to Satan, then I must tell you, sir, I cannot believe it. Oh, but woman, you do believe there if are you witches. think that I am one, then I say there are none. You surely do not fly against the gospel. Oh, but she believes in the gospel, sir, every word. Question Abigail Williams on the gospel, not myself. But you do not mean to doubt the gospel, sir. You cannot think it. This be a Christian house or a Christian house. God keep you both. Let the third child be quickly baptized, and go you without fail each Sunday into Sabbath prayer, and, and keep a solemn, quiet way among you. And John! Child, what's the matter? They take my wife, and Rebecca nurse! Rebecca's in the jail! John, Cheever come and take her in his wagon. We've only now come from the jail, and they won't even let us in to see them! They've surely gone wild now, Mr. Hale. Mr. Hale, can you not speak with the deputy governor? I'm sure he mistakes these people. Pray, calm yourself, Mr. Nurse. My wife is the very brick and mortar of the church, Mr. Hale. And Martha Corey, there cannot be a woman closer yet to God than Martha. How is Rebecca charged, Mr. Nurse? For murder, she's charged. For the marvelous and supernatural murder of Goody Putnam's babies. What am I to do, Mr. Hale? Believe me, sir, if, if Rebecca Nurse be tainted, then, then nothing is left to stop the whole green world from burning. But let you rest upon the justice of the court. The court will send her home. I know it. You cannot mean she'll be tried in court. But how may such a woman murder children? And remember, until an hour before the devil fell, God thought she beautiful in heaven. I never said my wife were no witch, Mr. Hale. I said she will read in books. Mr. Corey, exactly what complaints were made on your wife? That bloody mongrel law cop charger. You see, he buy a pick of my wife four or five years ago, and it dies soon after. So he come dancing in for his money back. And my wife, Mike, she says to him, Walcott, if you haven't the wit to feed a big brother, you'll not live to own that, she says. And now he go into court and claim that from that day to this, he cannot keep a pig alive more than four weeks, because my Martha bewitched them with her books. Uh, Mr. Cheever, good evening, sir. Good evening. Good evening to you, John Proctor. I hope you do not come on business of the court. I do, Proctor. I, I'm a clerk for the court now, you know. It's a pity, Ezekiel, that an honest tailor might have gone to heaven and must now burn in hell. You'll burn for this, do you know it? I must, as I'm told. You surely know that, child. And I just think you'd be sending me to hell. I like that the sound of you, you know. I like that the sound of you. Now, Proctor, believe me, how heavy be the law. All its tonnage I do carry on my back to them. I have a warrant for your wife. Say your warrant for my wife? You said she were not charged! I know nothing else. Where was she charged? I've given 16 more tonight, sir, and she's won. Who condemned her? Why, Abigail Williams. Abigail Williams? But all the proof, what proof? Proctor, I have a little time. The court may be to search your house, but I like not to search your house. Though you can be any profits your wife may keep you. Poppets? I never kept no poppets, not since I were a girl. I spy a pop of you, Roger. Why, this is Mary's. Would you please give it to me? Has the court discovered a text in poppets now? Do you keep any, any others like this in your house? No, nor this one until this evening. What signifies a poppet? Why, a puppet, a puppet may signify. Now, woman, will you please come with me? She will not. Elizabeth, fetch Mary here. No, no, I forbid her to leave my sight. You will leave her out of sight and down to mine, mister. Fetch Mary, Elizabeth. What signifies a poppet, Mr. Cheever? A poppet? Why, this, this. What? What's there? It is a needle. Brother, brother, it is.
It's a needle. What signifies a needle? Why, this goes hard with the proctor. I have my desk, but here's calamity. You see it, sir. It is a needle. Why? What meaning has it? It's a girl, the Williams girl, Abigail Williams. She sat to dinner in Reverend Parrish's house, and without a word, no warning, she falls to the floor like a sharp beast, he says. And when he goes to save her, stop two inches in the flesh of her belly, a needle he pulls out. And demanding for her how she came to be so stabbed, she testified her wife's familiar spirit to push it in. Why she put it in there herself? I hope you're not taking this for proof, Mr. Just hard proof. I find your pop a good crop to keeps. In the belly of the pop a needle stuck. I never warned to see such proof of hell. Now I bid you obstruct me not. Mary! I have this poppet coming to my house. What poppet is that, sir? This poppet! This poppet! Where? I think it is mine. It is your poppet, is it not? And how did it come into my home? I made it in the court, sir, and give it to Goody Proctor tonight. There, sir, do you have it? Mary Warren, a needle had been found inside this pocket. A needle? Why, I meant no harm by it, sir. So you stuck that needle in yourself? I believe I did, sir. I... There, sir, what say you now? Child, are you certain this be your natural memory? It may it be perhaps that someone conjures you even now to say this? Conjures me? Why, no, sir, I'm entirely myself, I think. Let you ask Susanna Volcott. Susanna saw me sewn in court. Ask Abby. Abby sat beside me when I made it. Bid him be gone, mister. Your mind is surely settled now. Bid him out, mister. What signifies a needle? Mary, you, you charge a cold and cruel murder on Abigail. Murder? I charge Abigail was stabbed tonight. A, a needle was found stuck into her belly. And she charges me. I. That girl is murdered. She must be ripped out of this world. Ripped out of the world. Little you heard it. Out of my house. You dare not touch the warrants. Out of my house. Respect the deputy governor's warrants. But damn the deputy governor. Out of my house. Proctor, Proctor. You will see her taken. Proctor, if she is innocent. If she is innocent, why do you never wonder if Paris be innocent? Or Abigail? Is the accuser always holy now? Were they born this morning as clean as God's fingers? I'll tell you what's walking Salem. Vengeance is walking Salem. We are what we always were in Salem, but now the, the crazy little children are jangling the keys to the kingdom, and come and vengeance writes the law. This war is vengeance, and I'll not give my wife to vengeance. I'll go, John. You will not go! I have nine men outside, John. You cannot keep her. The law binds me. I cannot budge. You will have her taken? But the, 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 the court is just. Court is violent! God will not let you wash your hands of this! I think I must go with them, John. Mary, if there is bread enough for the morning, we will bake in the afternoon. Tell Mr. Proctor as though you were his daughter. You owe me this, and much more. I will bring you soon. You will bring me soon, John. I will fall like an ocean upon that court. Fear nothing. I will fear nothing. Tell the children I have gone to visit someone sick.
jails are packed. Our greatest judges sit in Salem now, and hangings promised. Man, we must look to cause proportionate. Were there murder done, perhaps, and never brought to light? Abomination, some secret blasphemy that stinks to heaven. Think on cause, man, and let you help me to discover it. For there is your way. Believe it, there is your only way when such confusion strikes upon the world. Let you counsel among yourselves. Think on your village, and what may have drawn from heaven such thundering wrath upon you all. I shall pray God open up our eyes. Never heard no murder done in Salem. Leave me, Francis. Draw. Tell me. Are we lost? Go home now, Giles. We'll speak on it tomorrow. Aye. But you think of it. We'll come in tomorrow early. Well. Mm. Aye. Go now. Good night, Francis. still others. If I live, if 
I not murder, surely I will. Even the last hypocrite's dead. And there is no one good? There's one. You are good. How am I? How am I good? Why, you taught me for this, therefore you are good. And blush for shame because Lord Rebecca called you loose. <clears throat> then you burned my ignorance away. As bare as some December tree, I saw them all walking like saints to church, running to feed the sick and hypocrites in their hearts. And God gave me strength to call them liars. And God made them listen to me. And by God, I will scrub the world clean for the love of him. Oh, John, what a wife I'll make you when all the world's white again. You'll be amazed to see me every day. Why are you cold? My wife goes to trial in the morning, Abigail. Why? Surely you knew of it. Uh, is she well? As well as she may be. Thirty-six day in that place. You said you came friendly. My wife will not be condemned, Abigail. You brought me from my bed to speak of her? I would, I would warn you of what I will do in the court tomorrow. I will not catch you by surprise, but give you all good time to think on how to save yourself. Save myself? If my wife is not freed, I am set and bound to ruin you, Abigail. Ruin me? I have brought you proof in documents that you knew that puppet were none of my wife's, and that you yourself made Mary Ward stab that needle into it. Oh, I made Mary Ward. You know what you do. You are not so mad. Oh, hypocrites! Have you on him, too? John, why do you let them send you? I warn you. No, they send you. They steal your honesty. I have found my honesty. No. This is not the voice. This is your sniveling, envious wife's voice. This is not the Corey's voice. This is Rebecca's voice. You were no hypocrite. I will prove you for the fraud you are. When they ask you why Abigail would ever do such a murderous deed, what are you talking about? I will tell them why. You'll confess to fornication in the court. Have it, so I will tell it. I say I will. If you can still hear, hear this. Can you hear? You will tell the court you are blind to spirits. You cannot see them anymore. And if you ever cry witchery again, I will make you famous for the whore you are. Never in this world! I know you, John. I know you are good. Let
Giles Poet, sir, and what contentious I man? I have asked the question, and I am old enough to answer it. My name is Corey, sir. Giles Corey. I have 600 acres and timber in addition. It is my wife who can condemn it now. And how do you imagine to help her cause with such contemptuous riot? Now be gone, your old age alone keeps you out of jail for this. They're telling lies about my wife, sir. Then I... you take it upon yourself to decide what this court shall believe and what it shall set aside? Your Excellency, we mean no disrespect. Disrespect indeed, it is disruption, mister. This is the highest court of the supreme government of this province. Do you know it? Your Excellency, I only said my wife were reading books, sir, and, and they come and take her out of my house. What books? What are you talking about? It's my third wife, sir, and, and I never had a wife to be so taken with books, do you understand? And, and I thought to find the cause of it, do you see? But, but it was no witch I played before, no witch. I broke charity with the woman. I broke charity with her. Then let him submit his evidence in proper affidavit. You are certainly aware of our procedure here, Mr. Hale. Clear this room. Come now, Giles. Come on. We are desperate, sir. We come here three days now and still cannot be heard. Who is this man? Francis Nurse, Your Excellency. His wife's Rebecca. That will condemn you this morning. Indeed, I'm amazed to find you in such uproar. I have only good report of your character, Mr. Nurse. I think they both ought to be arrested in contempt, sir. Let you write your plea, and in due time I will consider it. We have proof for your eyes, sir. God forbid you shut them to it. The girls, sir, the girls are frauds. What's what? We have proof of it, sir. They are all deceiving you. This is contempt, sir, contempt! Peace, Judge Hathorne. Do you know who I am, Mr. Nurse? I surely do, sir, and I think you must be a wise judge to be what you are. And do you know that near to 400 are in the jail from Marblehead to Lynn, and upon my signature? I... And 72 condemned to hang by that signature? I never thought to say it to such a weighty judge. But you are deceived. Mary Warren, what are you about here? She would speak with the deputy governor. Did you not tell me Mary Warren were sick in bed? Aye, sir. When I go to fetch her to the court last week, she said she was sick. She has been striving with us all all this week, Your Honor. She comes now to tell the truth to you. Who is this? The John Proctor, Your Excellency. Elizabeth Proctor is my wife. Beware this man, Excellency. This man is mischief. I think you must hear the girl, sir. Peace. Yes. What would you tell us, Mary Warren? She never saw no spirits. Never saw no spirits? Never. She has signed depositions, sir. No, no, I accept no depositions. Tell me, Mr. Proctor, have you given out this story in the village? Well, I know, sir. And you, Mary Warren, how came you to cry out these people for sending their spirits against you? Pretense. I cannot hear you. They were pretense, she says. And the other girls, Susanna Walcott and the others, they were also pretending? I Do you know, Mr. Proctor, that the entire contention of the state in these trials is that the voice of heaven is speaking through the children? I, I know it, sir. Mr. Proctor, before I decide whether I shall hear you or not, it is my duty to tell you this. We burn a hot fire here, mister. It melts down all concealment. Are you certain in your conscience, mister, that your evidence is the truth? Aye, sir, it is. And you will know it surely. I take it you came here to declare this revelation in the open court before the public? I, I, I would, sir, if you will permit it. Now, sir, what is your purpose in so doing? Why, I, I would free my wife, sir. There lurks nowhere in your heart nor hidden in your spirit any desire to undermine this court? No, sir. I will tell you straight, Mr. Earl. I've seen marbles in this court. I've seen people choked before my eyes by spirits. I've seen them stuck by pins and slashed by daggers. I have, until this moment, not the slightest reason to suspect that the children may be deceiving me. Do you understand my meaning? Aye, sir, I do, but... Does it not strike upon you that so many of these women have lived so long with such upright lies that Do and you read the Gospels, Mr. Proctor? I read the Gospel. <laughs> I think not. Or else you would know that Cain were an upright man, and yet he did kill Abel. Aye, the Gospel tells us that, but, but who tells us that Rebecca Nurse sent her spirit out to murder seven children? 
It is the children only, and this one will swear that she lied to you. Judge Hawthorne. Aye, she is the one. Mr. Proctor, this morning your wife sent me a claim in which she states that she is pregnant now. My wife pregnant? There be no sign of it. We have examined her body. But, but if she says she is, that, that she must be, sir. That, that woman will never lie. She will not? Never, sir, never. Mr. Proctor, if I should tell you now that I will let her be kept another month, and if she begin to show her natural signs, you shall have her living yet another year until she is delivered. What say you to that? Come now, you say your only purpose is to save your wife. Good then, she is saved at least this year, and a year is long. What say you, sir? It is done now, will you drop your charge? I, I think I cannot. Then your purpose is somewhat larger. These men are my friends, their wives are also. Sit down, sir, I judge you not. I'm ready to hear your evidence. Come not over for the court, I Marshal, go into the court and bid Judge Stoughton and Judge Sewell declare recess for one hour. Let them go to the tavern if they will. <coughs> All witnesses and prisoners are to be kept in the building. Sir, if I may, I've known this man all my life. It is a good man, sir. I'm sure of it, Marshal. Now what deposition do you have for us, Mr. Proctor? And I beg you, be clear, open as the sky, and honest. I have no lawyer, so I'll... The pure in heart need no lawyers. Proceed as you will. I... I would have you read this first, sir. It's a, a, a sort of a, a testament. Those signing it declare their goodwill of my wife and, and Rebecca good and will. my court. These are covenanted Christians, Your Honor. Land-holding farmers, members of the church. If you'll notice, sir, they all signed to saying that they never saw that they had no dealings with the devil after knowing them many years. How many names are here? Ninety-one, Your Excellency. These people should be summoned for questioning. Mr. Danforth, I gave them all my word. No harm would come to this them. This is a clear attack upon the court. This every defense an attack upon the court. All no. innocent and Christian people are happy for the courts in Salem. These people are gloomy for it. And I think you'll like to know from each and every one of them what discontents them with you? It is not necessarily an attack, I think. Yet it may These be. They're all covenanted Christians, sir. Then I'm sure they may have nothing to fear. Mr. Cheever, have warrants drawn for all of these. Arrest for examination. Now, Mr., what other information do you have for us? You may sit, Mr. Nurse. I have brought trouble on these people, my God. No, old man, you have not hurt these people if they be of good conscience. But you must understand, sir. A person is either with this court, or he must be counted against it. There be no road between. This is a sharp time now, a precise time. We live no longer in the dusky afternoon when evil mixed itself with good and befuddled the world. Now, by God's grace, the shining sun is up, and them that fear not the light will surely praise it. I hope you will be one of those. <laughs> she's not hearty, I see. No, sir, she's not. Mary, remember the angel Raphael. What he said to the boy Tobias, remember this. Do that which is good, and no harm shall come to thee. Come, man, we wait you. John, my deposition. Give him mine. Aye. This is Mr. Corey's deposition. Oh. What lawyer drew this, Corey? You know I have never hired no lawyer in my life, Hawthorne. It is very well phrased. My compliments. Mr. Paris, if Mr. Putnam be in the court, bring him in. You have no legal training, Mr. Corey? Do I have the best, sir? I have plenty three time in court in my life, and always plaintiff, too. Oh, then you are much put upon. Well, I am never put upon. I know my rights, sir, and I will have them. You know, your father tried a case of mine once, might have been 35 years ago, I think. Indeed. You never spoke to you of it? No, I cannot recall. Strange. You give me nine pound damages. You were a fair drug to your father. You see, I had a white mare about that time, and a fellow come to call the mare. Aye, there he is! Mr. Putnam, I have here an accusation by Mr. Corey against you. He states that you coldly prompted your daughter to try witchery upon George Jacobs, that is now in jail. It is a lie! Mr. Putnam states your charge is a lie. What say you to that? A fart on Thomas Putnam, that's what I say to that. But what proof do you submit for your charge, sir? My proof is there. If Jacob's hanged for a witch, he forfeit up his property. That's law. And there is none but Putnam what the coin to buy so great a price. 
This man is killing neighbors for their land. But proof, sir, proof. My proof is there. I have it from an honest man who heard Putnam say it. The day his daughter cried out witchery upon George Jacobs, he said she'd given him a fair gift of land. And the name of this man? What name? The name of the man that gave you this information. Why, I, I cannot give you his name. Why not? You know well why not. He'll lay in jail if I give his name. This is contempt of the court, Mr. Danforth. You will surely tell us the name. I will not give you no name, sir. I've mentioned my wife's name once, and I'll burn in hell long enough for that. I stand mute. In that case, I have no choice but to arrest you for contempt of this court. Do you know that? This is a hearing. You cannot clap me for contempt of a hearing. Oh, it is a proper lawyer. Would you wish me to declare the court in full session here? Or will you give me good reply? I will not give you no name, sir. I cannot. You are a foolish old man. Mr. Cheever, begin the record. The court is now in session. I ask you, Mr. Court. Your Honor, he has the story of confidence. He the devil lives it. on such confidences. Without confidences, there could be no conspiracy. It must be broken, sir. Old man. If your informant tells the truth, let him come here openly, like a decent man. But if he hides in anonymity, I must know why. Now, sir, the government and the central church demand of you the name of him who reported Mr. Thomas Putnam a common murderer. Excellency. Mr. Hale. If we cannot blink its core, there is a prodigious fear of this court in the country. Then there is a prodigious guilt in the country. Are you afraid to be questioned here? I may only fear the Lord, sir, but that there is fear in the country, nevertheless. Reproach me not with fear in the country. There is fear in the country because there is a moving plot to topple Christ in the country. But it does not follow that everyone accused is part of it. No uncorrupted man may fear this court, Mr. Hale. None! Mr. Corey, you are under arrest for contempt of this court. Now sit you down and take counsel with yourself, or you will be set in jail until you decide to answer all questions. Go, child! I'll cut you from father! I'll kill you yet! Peace, child! Peace! Now we'll prove ourselves. Now we will. Say nothing more, John. He's only playing. He plans to hide us all! This is a court of law, mister! I'll have no effrontery here. Forgive him, Your Honor, for his old age. Peace now, Giles. Now we'll prove it all. You cannot cry, Mary. Remember the angel. What he said to the little boy, hold fast to it, there is your rock. This is Mary Warren's deposition. Uh, before you read it, sir, I would have you remember that until two weeks ago she were no different than the other girls are today. She screamed, she howled, she swore familiar spirits grabbed her. She even testified that Satan, in the form of women now in jail, came to her and tried to win her soul away, but she refused to all this. Ah. She swears now that she never saw no spirits, vague or clear, that the devil may have sent to hurt her, and that the other girls are lying now. Excellency, a moment. I think this goes to the heart of the matter, sir. It surely does. I cannot say he is an honest man. I, I know him little. Uh, but in all justice, sir, a claim so weighty cannot be argued by a farmer. I beg you, sir, stop here. Send him home and let him come again with a lawyer. Now look you, Mr. Hale, this is a... I have signed 72 death warrants. I am a minister of the Lord, and I dare not take a life without there be a proof so immaculate no slightest fall of conscience may doubt it. Mr. Hale, you surely do not doubt my justice. I have this morning signed away the soul of Rebecca Nurse, Your Honor. A lot to conceal it. I, I tell you true, my hand shakes here just with a wound. I beg you, sir, this argument let lawyers present to you. Mr. Hale, believe me, for man of such, such terrible learning, you're most bewildered. I hope you will forgive me. Let you consider now, and I bid you all do likewise. In an ordinary crime, how does one defend the accused? One calls up witnesses to prove his innocence. But witchcraft is, ipso facto, on its face and by its nature, an invisible crime. Therefore, who may possibly be witness to it? The witch and the victim, none other. Now, we cannot hope the witch will accuse herself, granted. 
Therefore, we must rely upon her victims, and they do testify. The children certainly do testify. As for the witches, none may deny that we are most eager for their confessions. Therefore, what is left for a lawyer to bring out? I think I have made my point, have I not? Oh, but this child claims the girls are not truthful, and if they are not... That's precisely what I'm about to consider. Sir, what more may you ask of me unless you doubt my probity? I surely do not, sir. Let you consider it, then. And let me put your heart to rest. For deposition, Mr. Crawford. I should like Mr. to... Mr. Curse, I bid you be silent! Sit down, Mr. Proctor. You sit there. Uh, Mr. Cheever, will you go into the court and bring the children here? Aye, sir. Children, 